Hello, everyone, and welcome to another week of the book club, Gustavo's book club. I'm always very excited to be here and see all of you logging in from Canada and so many other parts of the United States. While we wait for everybody to log in, I just want to remind you to please, um, if you haven't, to visit my YouTube channel, which is under the name of Gustavo Tolosa, and subscribe. It helps me to continue to offer these free webinars. Um, if you haven't visited my website, it's been uh, improved, and it's will, it will continue to be improved this week. It's called plantemas.com. It's a P L A N T like plant and then E M U S dot com. And um, just wanted to tell you that I had a really good time. Uh, I produced five shows that they're called The Pianist and the Chef, in which it's a combination of a cooking show with a mini concert. And also, uh, I introduce you to some friends and family members and places. And um, it's, it's, it's fun. So if you would like to watch any, and they all have original recipes. The, there's the pianist and the chef episode one, two, three, four, five, and they're all listed on the website. Anyway, that's the end of the commercial break. <laughs> and um, we are currently reading this book. It's a wonderful book by my dear, dear friend, Chef AJ, that I know all of you admire and appreciate and love. And today we are going to tackle chapter two, which definitely needs two sessions. So we will break it in two. Um, so very excited because in this chapter, Chef AJ reveals the secrets. And I want to say the secret, because there is something that when you get it, when you really understand it, um, it's like a veil is lifted from your eyes and everything becomes clear. So what is this secret which Chef AJ says, well, it's really not a secret because it's something that has been going around for a long time and I didn't invent it. But um, there is a, I mean, it's, in a way it's a secret because a lot of people still don't know it. And it is two words, just two words. And uh, very powerful two words. And we're going to spend the time today talking about those two words and those two words are not eat less uh, or count calories uh, what are those two words let's see i know many of you know what they are why don't we do a little game here and see if you can type those two words in the chat the two words that once you know them you should be okay for the rest of your life. Yes, and here we go. It is calorie density. Wow, what powerful words, calorie density. Of course, if I just say, oh, calorie density, well, you know, I can brush them off like, well, what is a calorie? Well, it has to be, it has to be, do something about calories and with the density of the calories. Well, let's just uh, explain a little bit here. So calorie density talks about the amount of calories per pound of food. I can say pound, I could say kilos, okay? But if I say kilos, I would have to say half a kilo because one pound is about half a kilo. All right. So, but it's the amount of calorie in one pound of food. And why would that matter? Well, we will see that in just a minute. But uh, Chef AJ here on page 
18, I believe. Yes, I'm on page 18 of the book, if, if you're following with the book. In the second paragraph, she says that um, in her research lab at Penn State University, where she studies human eating behavior, Dr. Rawls discovered that all people consistently eat pretty much the same weight of food every day. Very interesting fact, because, you know, we eat, a, some of us eat a large variety of foods every day, and we never stop to think that for some reason we all eat, I mean, not we as a, as a group, but I, if I weighed my food, I would find out that I eat about the same weight, the same amount of food every day without even trying. That's what Dr. Rawls found out. And so simply by changing the caloric density of the foods that they ate, they could easily lose weight without the usual suffering associated with having to eat smaller portions. So what happens with most of the diets out there that you and I have tried? I assume you have. I used. To, I have, think I tried every in my earlier years, every way of losing weight. What, what most diets ask you to do is to eat less which makes as much sense as asking you to breathe less. Can you, can you imagine and say, well, sorry, but instead of breathing, I don't know, I'm making up a number, 10,000 times a day, you're just gonna have to breathe 8,000 times. You know, it makes no sense. You will breathe as many times as needed. And the same way, you're going to eat as many times as needed. It's simply not sustainable to eat less. The problem with consuming smaller portions of food is that you get so hungry that you eventually go off your diet. This is the last paragraph of page 18. That's the problem. You eventually cannot sustain it, and so you simply cannot maintain an eating style that keeps you hungry all the time. When we restrict calories, our body receives the message that it is starving. There is a little switch there that says starving, starving, starving mode. When your hunger signals uh, have been distorted by chronic dieting, your body senses that you haven't consumed enough calories and drives you to eat even more food by sending you powerful hunger signals that even those who possess a great amount of willpower cannot ignore. So what we're going to do now uh, is watch some of the slides that Chef AJ uses in her presentation. And um, I hope that this visual representation here will help. So it's, um, these are the slides. This is Chef AJ. Uh, uh, in the left, and she usually says, I, I'm in the picture and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with a cow. And she said, uh, the cow, uh, you know, I'm, I'm to the right. Um, and, um, so she had still lost weight, but she was still eating nuts and seeds and avocados. And after she left those, you can see the picture on the right. So calorie density is the calories per pound of food. And she talks about um, Dr. Um, Barbara Rose in this book that really changed her life. Uh, when she found it one day in a dollar store. And because it has a lot of pictures, it really, she really was able to rasp uh, the concept. Many of us are visual learners, so that helped. So on page 19, that five, 500 calories a day um, is what you can 
um, safe by eating this way that she's proposing, by switching to eating more vegetables and fruits and legumes and beans, uh, you can easily save 500 calories a day, which, you know, in a week is 3,500 calories that you're saving. And in, in, in a whole month is 15,000 calories that you are saving. So let's go to page 20. And in the first, in the second paragraph, she says, I once saw... Um, a, a post on Facebook that said no one ever got fat from eating too much kale. So with non-starchy vegetables, having a calorie density of about 100 calories per pound, okay? So you can see the green line to the left and you can see the number 100 there. Those are 100 calories per pound. Uh, when consumed raw and about 200 calories per pound when eaten cooked, it is virtually impossible to overeat of this food. And what is this food? Well, this food is non-starchy vegetables. I'm sorry about that. I clicked the wrong button. Non-starchy vegetables have about 100, 100 calories per pound. And she says that uh, she asks her clients to eat a minimum of two pounds of non-starchy vegetables per day. And she recommends that they eat vegetables for breakfast, BFB. That's right, she says. It may sound a little weird, but after you get used to it, this is the best way to start your day with vegetables. And we're going to talk about that later. Some of these vegetables, okay, let's see if I can see here. Some of these vegetables contain up to 96% water, and you could burn more calories in chewing and digesting of them than you would ever absorb from eating them. Eating non-starchy vegetables is probably the only thing that virtually every diet style has in common, and their consumption is always encouraged and limited in almost all health and reducing programs. It would be exceedingly difficult to overeat of them. So on page 21, the third paragraph, she says, another secret to ultimate weight loss is to eat, not blend, your vegetables. So I'm going to pause here. This is very important because sometimes people get confused with this concept and they say, but, but if I make juice or I blend, I mean, my, my, uh, my veggies, that's, that's healthy, isn't it? Yes, and we're not saying that it's not healthy, but she explains it really well. I will teach you how to enjoy your veggies by providing you with some delicious cooking techniques and de delectable recipes. Once you see what you're regularly eating these nutritional powerhouses, especially for breakfast, does, um, you will definitely love them. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back. I thought that she explained it here, but she explains that later. All right, on page 21, number Let's see, one to the last paragraph, and I'm going to go here to my next slide. Okay. Here is a list of all of the non-starchy vegetables, just in case you think that you're going to get bored eating lettuce all the time. These are all non-starchy vegetables which you can eat raw, cooked, steamed, sautéed, baked, combined in many ways. For the first time since 2007, the FDA has approved a new device to treat obesity. This amazing breakthrough is called a vegetable. And here we have a doctor saying, stop eating so many vegetables. I cannot seem to find anything wrong with you. Train your body to crave healthy food. It's possible. No one ever has gotten fat by eating too much kale. 
So what is the next uh, moving along in this chart? By the way, the chart that we're talking about is in the back of the book, the back cover of the book. You have this chart that we're seeing here. So moving along on my calorie density chart, right after non-starchy vegetables, we have fruit with a caloric density between 200 and 300 per pound. A lot of these um, are, you see, fruit, and um, some of them, like tomatoes, for example, you know, they do fall under the category of fruit. Okay, I'm turning the page to page 22. She says that, of course, if this is all you ate, you would lose weight, but she's not suggesting that you do this. However, I simply want to make you aware that the people who do follow this way of eating, which is uh, fruititarians, low-fat, raw vegans, and those following the 80-10-10 diet style, with its high intake of raw fruits and vegetables are almost always extremely lean. It is possible to be overweight if the caloric densities of all these foods that you eat are, it, uh, it is impossible to be overweight. But for ultimate weight loss, it is important that you eat these foods in their whole natural state. I don't recommend liquid calories at all all for weight loss as they lack sufficient bulk to fill you up. And so we're going to look at some examples here. And um, these two containers, they represent your stomach. In the first one, we have 500 calories of whole apples. Look, your stomach would be full. It's about two and a half pounds of apples. Depending on the size and variety of the apples, that would be about six apples. The entire container is now completely full. In the second glass container, okay, we have 500 calories worth of applesauce. So those six apples that you have in the left is about 500 calories. Okay, and uh, in the other one, you have 500 calories of apple sauce. Now, the same glass container is mostly empty, containing only about five cups of apple sauce, but it still has the same number of calories. While the water and fiber are still present, Processing the whole apples into applesauce makes it less bulky and greatly decreases the volume. So it takes up much less space in the glass container and therefore, therefore less space in your stomach. So the fiber and the water in the left are in the real apples. You know, those the, the water and the fiber, fiber are left intact. And that's why you would get full with that. You would probably be able to eat up to three whole apples, but it would be very difficult to eat the six apples that you see there. So the water and the fiber produce bulk, which creates satiety. Satiety is the feeling of, of being full. When you blend your food, you greatly reduce the bulk, like you can see in the right hand side, so that you don't feel full. You don't, you know, there is no satiety. Now look at this one. The same six apples with 500 calories. Um, and uh, that one looks like it has apple sauce. Let's see. That one, the previous one was apple juice, okay? This is the apple salt, this is the apple juice, and it sells, it says here that the fiber has pretty much been taken out. So this apple juice is very high in sugar, which can raise your blood sugar more quickly than the whole apple. And in turn, 
raising your insulin levels more quickly. Remember that insulin is a hormone that is responsible for driving fat into the cells. This is very important. Insulin is a hormone and is responsible for uh, driving fat into the cells, which is something that you don't want because when your cells become saturated with fat, then you start developing diabetes. Consuming calories that don't contain fiber significantly increases your risk of constipation, colon cancer, and other related diseases because the bowel requires fiber to function properly. Fiber is found only in plant foods. Yes, animal foods of any kind do not contain fiber. Fiber is only found in plant foods. Fiber passes through the intestinal tract to help eliminate cancer-causing substances. Basically, it's what is taking all the that is not needed in our bodies out. I'm on page 24. Page 25. Chewing your food is important because it increases satiety. It changes the level of satisfaction that you experience from your food. At the very bottom of page 25, it says that the fourth container here, let's try, contains, see, what is that? Dried apple rings. And she makes those in her dehydrator. This process yields only two cups of dried fruit that would be very easy to eat when compared to six whole apples. You can right there see how easy it would be to overload with calories because if you eat the, the dry apples, you can eat two or three, four times the amount. So you would end up with um, 1,500 calories easily instead of 500 if you could even eat the six real apples. So you're going uh, from, you know, it's, it's a huge amount of, of um, calories uh, that is different when you eat the food intact. So let's move on and continue along. There you have the comparison of calorie density right here is the density of how many calories you have you want to eat the whole food because you're going to have satiety you will eat less and you will have less calories and your insulin is not going to go off the roof so let's go to our next group here which is four to six hundred calories and this is unrefined complex carbohydrates Starchy vegetables like the numerous amazing varieties of potatoes, sweet potatoes, and winter squashes like butternut, kabocha, or acorn contain approximately 400 calories per pound. Whole grain like corn, rice, quinoa, millet, and oats, to name a few, have about 500 calories per pound while the legume family, including beans, split peas, and lentils, contain between 550 and 600 calories per pound. To get 2,000 calories from these foods, you would need to eat about three to five pounds of them. And because whole grains and legumes absorb water when you cook them, they make you feel even fuller. You see, the foods with Caloric densities of 100 to 600 calories per pound are all whole foods found in nature. These are all whole foods that are found in nature. They're full of water, full of fiber, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, micronutrients, when you eat these foods that contain fiber and water, they create bulk, and bulk is what helps to create satiety 
that feeling of fullness in our tummies that tells us to stop eating. On page 27, Chef AJ says that um, animal products, on the other hand, are totally void of fiber and other um, processed foods as well. Let's see what I have here as the next slide and see if it's going to see right here. Now, AJ in her presentations draws a red line right there and she says, eat to the left of the red line. So now you know what that means. Eat to the left of the red line. And she would explain that you need to eat only whole plant foods to the left of the red lines. Vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and legumes. And there are literally thousands of healthy and delicious foods in each of these categories with which to choose from. So what about the foods to the right of the red line? Well, believe it or not, these are the exact foods that most Americans obtain, you know, of the, the majority of the calories from. Now, here are some examples before we go to the right of the red line of things um, that, um, you know, dishes that contain foods from the left of the red line. Burgers, salads, um, Brussels sprouts, some desserts. This is AJ bowl, baked potato with toppings, a huge salad. This is a plate that AJ would eat. People wonder how she can fit all that. But um, it's basically, when you, when you really think about it, that is water and fiber. So what about some of the foods to the right side? Well, we're going to talk about avocados, which are 750 calories per pound. And those 750 calories are primarily from fat. And here we're going to make a, a clarification on page 28. The second paragraph, AJ says that, um, you know, this is a whole food and it's, it's not unhealthy. For many people, particularly those of us who have struggled with our weight, the reality is that it's simply too calorically dense and that most of us cannot eat a little tablespoon of an avocado. You know, it's very hard to stop. We could easily eat two or three of them. So the amount of calories uh, that come from fat is quite high. It's incredibly delicious. So it's very easy to overeat. Uh, let's see here. Um, I wanted to show you guys one more thing before I, I go into uh, some cooking demos. And um, on page 29, she says, I'm not telling you to never eat an avocado in your life. When the calories in the food that you eat come from fat, this is what I want you to remember. When the calories in the food that you eat come from fat, they're easily and effortlessly stored as fat, where the calories from carbohydrates and protein, even if you overeat them, are either burned as heat or stored invisibly in the muscles or liver as glycogen. So that's what we will pick up next week. And I want to show you a couple of recipes that I made this week. So thank you for staying with me today. I know it was a little longer, but I wanted to show you these recipes. And um, I hope that 
if you got something out of today's session is calorie density and that we eat the whole food and nothing but the food. <laughs> um, so whole food, plant-based. We want these two things. If you could become obsessed with these two things, when you look at food, you'll do great. And by that, I mean water and fiber. Every time you look at something, you must ask yourself, does it have water and fiber? Does it have water and fiber? Or does it have water but not fiber? Or fiber but not water? That it needs to have both so that there will be bulk and you will feel full and satisfied. Otherwise, the caloric density goes up and um, it just is harder to lose weight. It's not that it's some, something like avocado or um, other foods that are calorically dense are unhealthy. It's just that if we are trying to lose weight, we really want to stay to the left of the red line. Here's the book, and in the back you have the chart, which you could make a photocopy, and I have I have it like this, and it's a magnet, and I this is on my refrigerator. Okay, I will see you all next week. Next week we will finish chapter two. If you have any questions, bring them or email them to me at info at plantemus.com. Bye-bye.